Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we'll be doing a dab 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 <laughs> dab 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 dabbed abstract with what I like to call the Mickey D's colors. So red, yellow, black, and white, all bright, uh, bright yellow and bright red too. So you know we're gonna we're gonna see what that kind of looks like together as colors. And I don't know if you can see them all, but red is like right there. Anyway, before I do that, real quick, I just wanted to talk about kind of what I use, the tools, just in case this is your first time watching one of my videos. Um, I'm using watercolor paper, although I don't recommend it for gloss enamel. Gloss enamel is very dense and it's very liquidy, so sometimes the weight of that uh, causes the paper to curl. So what I really suggest is really hard uh, acrylic paper like Arches paper, but it's expensive, or just some other kind of acrylic paper like Cancer or... Uh, what is Strathmore or whatever it is, using acrylic paper because it's thicker than watercolor paper. I just happen to have a lot of the watercolor paper. That's why I tend to use it. Um, no, second, you'll also notice that I have an MDF board here. I finally went out to Home Depot, spent like $5 and bought this little, I think it's like a two foot by two foot square um, of MDF board. Super cheap, but it gives me a flat surface that I can now paint on. So that's actually really good. Lastly, uh, I'm going to be using corrugated plastic to create the design. And I use a piece about this size, about the size of my palm, a little bit bigger, because that gives me a lot of coverage, but it doesn't dip into too many colors at once. So that's why if you watch any of my videos, I tend to use corrugated plastic about this size to create my paintings. So without any, you know, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to start with the red, and we're just going to put the red into little pools on the paper. And this is kind of where what we're going to work from when we start, you know, branching out across the uh, the painting. So we're going to leave a couple of little pools of the color, and then we're going to move into our next color, which is yellow. So we'll just put some up here because I kind of want to work that. And that was actually a lot, so I'm actually just not going to use a whole lot on the rest of the painting because we're going to pull as much of that as we possibly can. Next, we're going to move on to the black. We're going to put some black there, some here, some here, and a little bit next to the yellow. Lastly, we'll do white. I'm going to put a fair amount of white um, just because it tends to get lost in the other colors, kind of swallowed up. So we're going to put that here and here. We'll put a little puddle here, there, and there. And that'll probably be enough paint. If it's not, we can always add more. If not, or if it is, and if it's too much, we can't really take it off. So always better to have uh, too little than too much. So now we'll start with, we're going to go ahead and dab the painting. And we're going to take these colors and we're going to kind of crush them into each other. And we're going to take the colors and we're going to put them into the open spots on the painting. So we dip it into a color and then we drag that to somewhere where there isn't any color. And then we take this again and we drag it somewhere where there's no color. And then we take it again and drag it into somewhere there isn't. And we just kind of do this over and over again, filling the surface with the colors. And when you pull the paint, like the, uh, when you pull the plastic off of the surface, you want to pull it straight up when possible because pulling it straight up kind of gives it uh, the little flower, fire, fire, flower look. I don't know how to explain it. You'll, if you've never seen my videos, you'll, you'll see what I've done. Uh, if you have seen my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. These little swirls that it makes. You know, you, you kind of want to just pick it straight up when you, when you do that. Okay, so couple of things we're starting to lose those distinct colors also I don't believe that it was enough uh, paint for the surface which I thought it was gonna be but apparently I was wrong I'm gonna pull that out I kind of want the white but there's a lot up there so we're gonna go ahead and pull that out all right so the first thing you'll notice is that there's an overwhelming amount of red um, so we're not going to add any more red. We are going to do some more purple right there and probably right there just to kind of fill it in and we'll move it. 
Next, we want to do a little bit more white because it's like I said, it, it's kind of getting lost, and that just that just happens with these types of paintings. Last thing we're gonna add just a little bit more black, and we'll just put it over the areas we already kind of have some, and then we're just gonna blend those colors into the painting. So we'll take our yellow and we're gonna pull it out, pull it out, bring it out, bring it out. There's a lot of paint there, so we're going to try to pull some of this paint away from the middle where it's going to get pulled into the center. All right, so now I'll just kind of go back and I'll look for any gaps in the painting where there isn't paint, although it's pretty full, so I'm sure that it, it did get covered. Okay, so that's it. So now I'll just pull this paper or the tape so you can kind of see the finished painting or I'll just rip the tape and not pull it off. All right. And when I pull the tape off, I try to pull it at an angle so that it, even if it sticks to the paper a little bit, um, it's not that bad if it rips. And generally my paintings would go in a frame with a mat anyway, so you'll see the edges. But if I don't take the painting down, then it, it moves around a lot, so we don't want that. Okay, so that is it. That is the finished piece. So we'll go ahead and take a look at it here. So there's the final piece. There's a lot of glare, unfortunately. See if I can come up here and get a snapshot. Okay. All right, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at the textures. So you can see those flame swirls, as I like to call them. And so by bringing that paint over itself multiple times, it starts to blend those colors. And it creates a nice little, you know, little abstract uh, painting here. Now, I have a feeling that there's too much paint on this painting. And in areas kind of like this one, uh, right there, there's a, there's a lot of paint. And I think that you can kind of see it starting to pull. What will happen is because it's so liquidy and the paper kind of comes up on the edges. Like you can kind of see that it's, it's already coming up. So what happens is the weight of the paint pulls into the middle and then it lifts the edges because now the middle is heavier than the outside. And what it'll do, and you can kind of see it when with the reflection, you can kind of see how there's little pools of paint. And when there's a lot, and it's starting to do it there, that's why there's these little arcs right here. Um, the only downside to this method is using too much paint will cause it to move. Like those colors will start to pull together. They blend together and you lose the distinct uh, shapes of the little flower type things. Uh, it's also doing it right here where you can see that the lines are stretched and so it's pulling into the middle. So unfortunately that is the downside of, of using gloss enamel and using too much so if I if I didn't use too much then that really wouldn't be an issue because it would kind of stay where it's at but if I put too much on there and then you know press it down all around and it's just too much then it starts to pool and it's a problem that I run into with doing these paintings is like okay they're they're easier to make it can make them in 10-15 minutes but on the on the flip side if I don't balance it well enough with the amounts then it starts to 
you know, overtake it and pull and then it, it just doesn't look as good. But anyway, um, overall, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this painting. Uh, I think one, because I use too much, but also two, the colors once mixed, they're just, I just really don't like them. Um, so maybe I'll use these colors again in the future. I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and set it up to do another painting. So I'll go, I'll just see you guys in the next video. Take care guys. Bye.